see if we're live. Happy Friday, my people. Happy Friday, gents. What is going on, you guys? XD here back again. And it's Friday. And it's Friday. Let me check in the chat and see what's popping and see what's up in here. Happy Friday, Adam Smith. What's good, bro? DJ Ngoma, the ones, family, hola, hola, hola. How you guys doing? I feel like a DJ whenever I come through live. <laughs> I always feel like a DJ, you know, with the mic and, you know, the bassy voice. How you guys doing this late afternoon? Hope you guys had a great day. This is the X-Dizzle Drive, taking you home. <laughs> oh, my God. But, yeah, I have no idea of what I'm trying to do today, but I just know I just had to come out here and um, chill with my people. Chill with you guys, man, and see what's up. And hopefully we can maybe cook something up. What's good, Melvin Beats? What's good, Sebastiano? What's good, the critic Phil? What's good, bro? Happy Friday to you too, man. Happy Friday to you too. What you guys been up to this week, man? And how you guys, you know, going to celebrate Christmas? If you're going to celebrate Christmas, let me know how you're going to celebrate that. Um, I want to know what you guys been up to, man. Because I think most, most of you guys that... Um, follow me here on youtube don't follow me on instagram and so forth and i feel like you know we don't have a, a good proper connection you know that we can actually chat because i feel like when you're someone that's like on here on youtube people start to feel like you're this object or you're this type of person some people do look at you as a celebrity or whatever but i feel like there's this disconnect most people think that you're not human you don't do normal things but i'm also just a human guys i want to know what you guys think i want to connect with you guys i want to know how your days you know has been i want to know how your weeks is going i want to know your future i want to connect i'm just also here to you know make friends and just connect with real people and you guys are my real people and this is why i keep making videos because i support each and every one of you guys <laughs> cook some yanos Oh, bro. <clears throat> oh, the one's family cooking up some beets, dog. Trying to get better and better. Awesome, man. Good to hear, man. Keep at it, bro. Keep at it. Yeah, um, Sebastiano, that's true, man. Um, I'm also at that point where I'm trying to strategize for the new year as well. Um, I'm trying to, to kind of change my mindset on things and my outlook on things. Even here on YouTube, I'm trying to improve my whole aesthetic of well, I can say the whole aesthetic of my channel, instead of it just being a channel full of, you know, um, FL Studio thumbnails, because I'm not being paid by FL Studio, you know what I mean? Like, I would enjoy being, like, maybe them sponsoring me or them keeping an eye on me and sponsoring videos and whatnot, but I actually am just a person that's out here to help people that cares about music producers and what we do. And I'm just here to also help. So I'm trying to change the aesthetic of my channel to make it a channel about a human being, a person, and their journey as a music producer and uplift the music producer lifestyle. So I want to change the whole outlook of my content. That's why I'm trying to do content with my fiance. That's why I'm trying to do different types of content that will kind of help and be refreshing to you guys. Whenever you see me drop something, you, you know, you get excited because you don't know exactly what you're going to get because I feel like most of the time you end up being a person that's just boring. You know, you you become stale because I, I intend to be here on YouTube for a really long time because I feel like you my channel, this YouTube channel is a place where I'm going to be documenting my thoughts, everything that is going on and so forth, of which I don't want to make it like um like you know the normal vlog like channels where it's like 
Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm gonna to be vlogging. I'm gonna be doing all that obnoxious stuff. I don't want it to be like that. I want it to be cool, you know, where we just can connect. When you guys can feel like you know someone and you feel like you know me personally, to where you, if maybe you come to Cape Town and you're in my city, you can actually just hit me up and be like, "Yo, ex, I'm in your city." Let's link up, you know what I mean? And I would definitely would want to link up with some of you guys. So if you're ever in my city, you know, visiting from anywhere and, you know, hit me up in my socials. If you need some, you know, um, some recommendations on some good spots, if you, you know, you with about the nightlife and whatever, I can always just recommend some places that you can check out or whatever. But I feel like, you know, I'm also human and we must connect on a human level. I think that also chases away the whole negativity aspect that's here online because that also scares me as a content creator. When I see other content creators facing a lot of negativity on the stuff that they do, then I start to wonder about you know, uh, what's going to happen to me? What if this happens to me? How am I going to take it? How am I going to be, you know, how am I going to uh, go through that or handle that and all that? So it's really crazy. I hope you guys understand that because I know I'm kind of rambling on because um, it's kind of thoughts that are just in my head, man. Um, Sebastiano, you say... Yeah, yeah, I agree, man. Um, the following is the most loyal. And I think I haven't seen anyone, like, like I cannot speak for everybody, but I don't know whoever is here in Africa. I can talk about South Africa, but who streams and who's as consistent as I am on YouTube in terms of music production? If there is anybody that's as consistent as me, let me know who that is. I would love to connect with people like that. You know, I know uh, some other guys like, you know, Ironic, Dysphonic, and, and some of these other guys as well that are on here on YouTube. And some of you guys might be doing also uh, content and whatever. But you guys must also let me know so I can also support your channels. So I can also check out, you, uh, you know, check out your guys' channel whenever you drop content. I can watch. If you're doing vlogging, if you're a filmmaker, if you're whatever, I am also a filmmaker. Like, some of you guys don't know, but we also make films. Like, we, we also are filming you know, we just bought a this new camera, uh, bought, bought a mic for this, and we also do filming and stuff like that, and you know, a lot of that stuff. So we do so much stuff, and I know you guys also do a lot of interesting stuff, and I would love to know what you guys do so we can connect on more levels instead of just the normal, you know, uh, FL Studio level. Show me how to make a beat, show me how to do this, you know, type of way, but. I feel like we should really connect as human beings as well. Uh, the critic says, about to hit the road from work. <laughs> One hour drive, hope you'll still be online. If not, I, 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 I might still be online, man. I might still be online, but we'll see. We'll see. When are you going to continue with Ableton Live tutorials again? Um, Ableton Live is really nice. I really enjoy working with Ableton Live, but you see the problem with Ableton Live is that um, I cannot really do so much on Ableton Live because not, not a lot of people are interested in producing in, in Ableton. Not a lot of people use it. So it becomes a point where, or it becomes a thing where I must now think about viewership because I don't want to take, uh, I don't want to put out content that no one is going to watch because, I mean, I've recently put, put out videos like right now videos that are on screen i did a video with my fiance it's got 500 views i work hard on that video i spent all a few hours editing this video recording it preparing it made a video how to find you know how to fit tempo 339 video you know views no one is watching this stuff so it's effort that i'm putting out then i don't get any viewership and if i'm to work on something for ableton and then 20 people you know, 50 people, 100 people watch, that's not going to be worth it for me. You know what I mean? I can make you happy and clicks, but it's not really going to help me or motivate me to keep doing it when no one actually responds to it. Because people here on online, basically, what they do is that they cry for something, right? Like, I get this all the time. They cry for something. XD, make this. XD, make this. After I make it, they disappear. They watch it. They don't even like. They don't even comment. They don't even share it. Then 
they watch it, they get what they want, and then they bounce, you know. So at the end of the day, that kills the channel. And at the end, it doesn't motivate me to keep doing the same. You know what I mean? So in turn, I have to always strategize and think about what type of content I'm making. Because at the end of the day, I'm trying to make this content for you guys and not for me. If I start making content for me, then yeah, the channel will take a really different turn. And I will probably start to do Ableton Live again. But I will have to save up and purchase it. And purchase the full Ableton Live suite so I can really show you all of it and everything. Um, Bongo said, Hurtman, uh, I recorded vocals for the first time. How can I send you my track so that you can assist me in the best way you can? I'm not doing any live feedback. And uh, I don't know how you want assistance. But if you know other producers or whoever, you can send them your track, bro. And have them listen to it. I don't know how you want me to assist you, but I feel like this is another problem that I face. A lot of people just send me messages. Yo, bro, I have a new track. Can I send it to you? Can I send it to you? What must I do with your song? How can I help you? What If I listen to it and I'm like, okay, cool. I listen to it. Now what? How is that going to help you? You know what I mean? So what do you need help with? Let me know. I'm right here on stream. You can ask me any question you want to ask me. I'm right here. My attention is ex directly to you. So if you have any song that you want, if you if you uh, want the whole channel, the whole community to listen to it, um, maybe on Sunday I can do a, a feedback session and all of that. But I want I want it to grow. I want you guys to also help me grow these things. I don't want to keep seeing the same people over and over again. This is basically what I'm trying to say that we need to also build this channel because this is just not my channel. It's your guys' channel as well. You're part of this community. So if you do not help me, you know, and if you do not help the process and make it easier, then it's not going to be easy for the both of us. We're still going to be disconnected. It's going to be hard for me to help you, you know, because I have a lot of people in my DMs and my inbox, but then I don't have people in my comment section and people, you know, in my view counts. You know what I mean? Because what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to help you guys. But at the same time, you guys are not helping me back. No one is sharing. People are downloading the videos. They're not even watching it online. People are skipping ads, which means I'm not getting anything at the end of the month or getting much of revenue and all that. So it really doesn't help me or motivate me to keep doing this. And, you know, it's just, it's just something that happens when you're in this type of thing. Because at the end of the day, you know, um, we all don't understand how it works. But one thing I'm going to tell you right now before it slips my mind is this. Music producers are the most hypocritical people on earth. Like for me, that's just what I think. Music producers are the most hypocritical, me included. Okay. My fiance had to teach me that if I watch a video on YouTube, because we watch a lot of YouTube. If I watch a video on YouTube, I have to remember to leave a like if... I actually like it or actually react to it, you know, and I, I was at a point where I, I didn't like, I would just come out of the, you know, come out of the, the video and watch some nails or stuff like that. I had to also learn, but I'm the same guy that's also saying, Hey, drop a like down below, comment down below, you know, to, uh, to you guys, whenever I drop a video. So I feel like if you want to create a following with your music and you want people to respond to your music, you want to create a following with your music you need to also practice that same thing that you're doing that that you want to other musicians as well you need to also support you need to also do that as well you know what i mean support to get support that's the only way you you know you can understand how the next person feels if you cannot like if you cannot drop a like if you cannot drop a like or comment on my video or say something positive about content that I'm giving you that is helping you. Why do you think anybody is going to give you feedback, positive feedback on your song or creative feedback on your song or actually care that you dropped a song or actually even care that you make music? Why would they care? They're just going to react the same way you're reacting to someone else. You know what I mean? I feel it's just a hard truth that we need to get out of our minds that 
it's just us that need the attention, but no one else needs our attention. You know, that's why I started the live feedback sessions where I'm like, you know what? I also want to give you guys feedback. I, don't know what, I also want to listen to you guys' music because when I post my music here on my channel, I expect it to get listened to and you guys do listen to it. But I'm not sure if you guys like it or not. That's why I ask if you, you know, if you, um, if you do uh, like it, you can comment and say something. And most of the time you guys, you know, do say something that, oh, dude, this track is really dope and, and so forth and so forth. And I, th I think that's the same thing. I think as music producers, we also need to practice what we preach. We want people to listen to our music. We want people to download our music. We want people to play and stream our music. But are you doing that for a creative that you also follow? Are you doing it for a creative that is a stranger, that is not even your friend or somebody you know? Are you doing it? That's the question I have for you today on this really good Friday. Uh, let me check the chat. Yo, what's up, Mami Lang? How can I make my beats more full? Um, what I can say is about making your beats more full is to add more instruments, is to add more... Um, Add more instruments in them if you want to make them full. Because what I look at it is um, when we're making music, we're trying to fill up space or um, we're trying to fill up space in the air, right? Or in, in, in someone's ears, right? So what you're trying to do is you need to have instruments playing everywhere at every spot. It's like filling up a space. It's like if I'm trying to fill up this McDonald's uh, cup, right? I want to fill it up everywhere, all the way to the top, right? Which means I must keep pouring up until it gets full. So you need to look at it as, okay, we have panning. We have, you know, from left all the way to the right. So I want to make sure that I have instruments everywhere panned from the left all the way to the right, you know, in terms of mixing. So if you want to have an instrument over here, an instrument over there, an instrument over there, an instrument over there, you know, and um, that's that's the first way you can look at how you can fill up a track, and then you can look up, you can look at this at um, a way of filling up in terms of frequencies. Look at your EQ when you're playing your 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 track. Just open EQ two and just look at your EQ and look at where it's lighting up the most, and look at where it's most dimmest where it's not really lighting up much. That's a frequency that has space for you to actually throw in an instrument and fill up that space and just EQ and make sure that it, you know, it fills in that, uh, that space. Because we know that strings and um, snares and stuff like that uh, consume or live in the mid-range. We know that hats and some percussion live in the, uh, uh, in the high end and the mid-highs. And we know that some instruments are in the low mids as well. And we know that bass and kicks are in the low end. So that's another way you can fill up your track as well. You cannot make a track that has five instruments and expect that an effect is just going to come up and fill up that track. No such thing. That is not going to happen. So tr that's how you can make your beats full. Try and uh, fill up your beats with more instruments. Try and add variations you know, and uh, also adding harmonic distortion also helps uh, to your instruments, especially your bass and uh, other instruments as well. So try do that. I think it will really help you as well. So I hope that, you know, the, that helps. Let me see if I can get someone else's question. How does it for SA producers have spoken to preach using bots? Oh, wow. Yeah, people... People do use bots, bro. Um, people do use uh, bots and people uh, buy following um, to to get to a certain place. Like uh, like you're on like you're on YouTube. If you if you maybe buy like let's say for instance, I have eighteen point four k subscribers and I'm craving for that hundred thousand subscribers. I can buy maybe you know uh, more subscribers and you know just to get my numbers up. But usually you can tell if you do the math that this person has bought these subscribers because 
these subscribers are coming from um, some subscriber farm where people are just clicking subscribe all day on these channels that they're asked to click subscribe on in a factory somewhere, but they do not engage. But engagement must match the subscription count, you know. So out of every channel or whatever, there's supposed to be at least a 10% engagement or a 10% viewership from the subscription number. I mean, people sub subscribers are basically people that are passing by um, a channel. Like I know that me having 18,000 subscribers means it's 18,000 people that pass by and that are actually interested in what I'm doing. It's not that it's people that are watching right now every time I drop a video. So I know that my viewership, when I look at my videos, I get at least a thousand to two thousand uh, views within two weeks or three weeks. Like if you look at my videos four weeks ago, it's four point five k views. Um, two uh, four weeks ago, two thousand views. Two weeks ago, one point four k views, and so forth. Um five days ago 1.2k views uh six days ago you know like i know in a week i get at least a thousand or up to two thousand average of views and that is fine for me i know that's my normal engagement you know with my um with my sub uh, subscriber number so i know that's it and that's that's what that's what happens you cannot have a track that you release and on soundcloud and the track has a hundred thousand plays and you have like five comments, you know, or five shares. That doesn't make sense. You know, it mean, it, it might actually mean that people did play your track, but they didn't like it, which means they didn't comment and they didn't share it. That's a bad sign. It's either you bought those plays or something is really happening. Something doesn't add up. The mathematics is supposed to add up. That's all I can say. But if you want to do that, that's up to you, you know, um, each to their own. Man, that's what really happens in this industry. Everybody has everybody has their own way of doing things. Michael says, I watch your stuff. I live in Cape Town, make beats. I did know you're from... Yeah, I'm from Cape Town, bro. I'm from Cape Town. Uh, Tashinga Nyandoro. What's Wagwan, Wagwan, X, Wagwan, bro. How much do you make a month with YouTube videos? Um, it varies. It varies. It's uh, like I put out a video uh, of how much I make out of every thousand views, right? It's more or less. It varies. It, it might be around um, three, three thousand rand to three point five thousand rand. So if I do have a video that, that, you know, or more viewership or maybe a video that really does well and it has a lot because, you know, then I might get more. If I don't get a lot of viewership, then it might be less. So somewhere around there. Yeah, I agree, Forbes. The route should be two-way. Uh, lucky, what's good, bro? Yeah, I agree, Sebastiano. Uh, percussions and panning are probably, yeah, yeah, that's true, that's true. I'm sorry, I'm looking this way, I'm looking uh, to the chat. Um, Adam Smith says, should your music be relevant? Uh, be relevant to who? And yes, your music needs to be relevant. Um, of course, we have, um, it needs to be relevant and depending with your target market as well, because some people make genres that are no longer trending because we know there's trending styles like we know right now i'm a piano and trap is trending or whatever because we have tiktok and um these other platforms as well um but you need to make sure that you also must be relevant to your audience you need to create an audience that um that will uh, accept and look at your uh, work as being relevant you know Oh, I appreciate it, Tommy. Um, you learned a lot. Okay, dope, man. Oh, Creative Breeds Promotions. Thank you so much for the seven rand. I appreciate it, man. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. It's people like you that, you know, um, that keep this working, that really push me. 
I, I, I don't know what to say. I'm, I'm a person that is not used to to charity or people doing nice things to me. But I really appreciate your seven rand, man. Um, I truly, truly appreciate it. It really helps the channel. It helps me, you know. And it's people like you that uh, that are really generous that will inspire other people to be generous as well to help people that help them because. You know, I'm trying to help as much as I can to give all my time and all my efforts into giving value on this channel so I can be able to help somebody because I promise you, Didier Dambrin, if you don't know who that is, <laughs> you know what, let me just ask, who knows who Didier Dambrin is in the chat? Just let me know if you know who that is. If you don't know who that is, just say, uh, just type out you don't know. <clears throat> Um, KC, perhaps I'm going to start putting ads in the beginning of my video. I already have uh, ads in the beginning. There is videos um, at the beginning of my uh, on my videos. There's always ads. Um, but sometimes they play, sometimes they don't play. And that's that's what just YouTube does. Sometimes it, it doesn't play them. It's random, man. That's why YouTube is not really... Uh, a place where you can where you can actually say that you can have a, a a steady stream of income it's not steady it just changes it's different it's not something that you can you know you can say that it you know it can be stable it's a stable income you know how did i become so good at mixing and mastering because that's my that's your only problem in music production Everybody has a problem with mixing and mastering. I look at myself as not being really good at mixing and mastering because I know people that are like the bomb, bro. There's people that are way better than me. I I think I know how to mix and master, right? And I do know how to mix and master to a certain extent, right? And I do it for people, but I got um, good at it out of practice i had to stop everything else i had to stop composition i had to stop i had to focus in just mixing and mastering i had to learn i had to um read forums i had to read books i had to um study people's sounds i had to listen to you know music that is nicely produced and reference and go back do back and forth it's like it's like if you really want to good at, uh, if you want to get good at mixing and mastering what you want to do is take a whole year to just learn mixing and mastering, like a whole year. You don't even compose anything. You don't even do anything. You probably have friends that make tracks or make beats or produce. Ask them to send you their tracks, then take those tracks and practice on them or, or practice on your tracks and then mix and master those and just practice. That's what I did. I took a long time just to learn how to mix and master and learn how to you know do a lot of more technical stuff. So out of that time, that's how I got good because I really got bored of composition and composing beats and making beats. That's why I can do it like this and I can make tutorials. Right now I can create something in 10 minutes, I'm done. You know, but mixing and mastering is an art form. I really enjoy it. Like I really enjoy it more than I enjoy cooking up something because for me, I feel like every time I'm mixing and mastering something, it, it always comes out different. It's always um, a different experience for me. You know, it's like... It's like driving a car. Whenever you drive a car, it's never the same experience. You know, it's always different. You know, it's like it's it's always just a different experience all the time because you don't shift gears the same all the time. You don't turn the same all the time. You know, although it might look like it's that simple, but it's not always the same. That's basically what it is like to me. That's why I always tell people that there's no presets you can use for mixing and mastering that will help because it's always different. Tracks are always, you know, are always coming out different. Um, even though they're mixed and mastered by the same people. Now, again, shout out to you, uh, Creative Beats Promotions for uh, the Seven Rand. Oh, later, Sebastiano. Check you later. What's good, QB? Prime Lab Studios. Don't know who it is. Um, okay, so I'm going to tell you who Didier Dambrin is. Didier Dambrin is, you know what, let me actually Google who Didier Dambrin is. Didier Dambrin. Boom. I hope I spelled that right. Um, D 
Didier Dambrin is the person that made Image Line. Well, the owner of Image Line. He's the person that made FL Studio, basically. He's the person that, you know, brought everything to to he's the one that made um FL Studio possible. If if you guys didn't know that, he's the person that actually in in you know in sip what do you what's the, what's the word I'm trying conceptualize or conceptual I don't know what the word is <laughs> pardon me but he's the one that actually made FL Studio and he is the creator of FL Studio if I'm if I'm um if I'm not messing that up but he is the person that is like the the person that changed everyone's life that changed a lot of people's life and I always remember that name because I always looked at him and I'm like wow this man is yeah he is dope because he did a lot for people like if it wasn't for him and the software and he doesn't really get so much uh so much credit from people uh you know I, I don't see it happening but he really doesn't get so much credit for the work that he has done I mean look at all the hits that are being made you know out of um, FL Studio and the com their company Image Line, there's so much that is being done, but nobody, you know, even knows his name or speaks his name or whatever. So I'm just like, okay. But I feel like he is the he is the Steve Job the Steve Jobs and the Bill Gates of FL Studio. He's the person that you know that made it and. Um, made it exactly what it is so if you don't know who that was that's him that's Didier Dambrin um, you see Image Line is a Belgium based software company founded in 1994 if you thought Belgium was all beer and chocolates then you may uh, be surprised to learn that Belgium is also the home of one of the world's most successful music production softwares yeah so he's the one that um, made the software if I'm um if I'm wrong, you can definitely correct me in the chat, but um, he's the one. Uh, thank you so much, uh, uh, Bubele, for the 14 Rand. I appreciate you, bro. I appreciate you. Thank you so much for the donation. Thank you so much for the 14 Rand. Guys, it's it's crazy, man. It's crazy. Thank you so much. I think my Christmas is going to be way better than I was expecting. I think my Christmas is going to be way better than I was expecting. Oh, man, look at this. Look at that. That's an old FL studio. But thank you so much for that, man. Thank you so much for the super chat. I appreciate everybody that's actually taking the time to, you know, throw in a super chat here and there. It really helps, guys. It really, really helps. I you have no idea how much it helps because um, um, each and every rand, you know, that I can get really makes things easier for me. I mean, this channel alone doesn't even pay my bills, you know. It doesn't even pay my rent. It doesn't even pay for the internet connection that I have. Oh yeah, there's someone asked. Uh, s s s what's your name? Spy saw seesaw. What's your data plan like? Network and data plan contract. You always on YouTube. <laughs> I have fiber, uh, telecom fiber. That's the data plan. It's uncapped. It's unlimited, so it's always on. It never switches off. It might go slow, but it never it never goes off. I'm always online. That's a sacrifice that I had to make because I knew that I wanted to be online all the time to do YouTube. So. That's one of the sacrifices. That's why, I, again, I'm saying that I really appreciate everybody that supports, that helps by watching the ads and the super chats as well. Like um, the two gentlemen that sent in super chats, it really helps. I really appreciate to see the donations um, and all of that. Uh, Adam Smith says, should everything in your track be in the same key? Yes, it must be in the same key. Your whole track must be in the same key. That's the whole purpose of music. Music is has an order. The order is key. So everything has to be in key. If you're, that's the that's the basic rule of making music. If something comes out of key, that's how you know it's wrong. That's basically how you can tell if something is wrong. So um, that's just how you know when something is wrong. Just uh, learn how to keep everything in key. Uh, Emonti says, do you have a record label? Have you ever thought of selecting tracks from your subscribers and releases a compilation? Yeah, I have thought about that, and um, I don't have a record label because I I don't feel like I can do record label business right now because I'm also trying to um, 
to come up as an artist as well. I do work with my fiance and we do release music, but I'm planning to release more music next year. Um, maybe if I get into the swing of things and maybe if I start really having more industry connections and all that, I can be able to maybe later on start to get into record label things. But one thing I'm going to tell you about record labels is this. I feel like if you want to have a record label, then you need to really concentrate on taking care of your artists. If you don't take care of your artists, then you are, it's, it's like having children and not being ready to have kids. You know, you, you won't really be able to take care of your kids. You won't really care. And, you know, everybody will be just running around. You won't have time to pay attention to everybody because artists are a different ball game, man. Producers are better but I'm afraid of artists, bro. Artists scare me. You know, I've been dealing with artists for a long time. NQ Music, thank you so much for the one euro. I appreciate you. Thank you so much, brother. I appreciate the super chat. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And Merry Christmas to everybody. Merry Christmas, guys. Merry Christmas. So, yeah, um, uh, I have thought about opening record label and probably um, down the line, maybe I can open a record label and definitely if... We, I, you know, if I were to work on releasing maybe a compilation of my subscribers' tracks, then we could definitely do that. But then, I hate owning everybody's work and maybe you know taking everybody's, or you know, giving myself that responsibility of taking all that in and taking it, you know, and keeping it to myself. Because what's gonna happen is that everyone is. When you have a compilation of people, basically, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm I'm trying to get my thoughts together so I can explain this, right? Okay, this is unscripted. So what happens when you release a compilation, right? Is that, let's say I release it on DistroKid. If I release it on DistroKid, it means I have to fill in each and every information of everyone that's featured on that project, which means all the uh, um the producers' names, all the composers' names. They need to get their fair share of the income that's going to be coming. So it's too much work, and with the work that I already have, I feel like it's something that I will definitely get to, but um, not now. I think it's still too early for me to think about uh, a record label and you know releasing subscribers compilation, you know, and all that. I can just guide you guys, you know, to to doing your own things and helping you guys release your own music because it's all about independence. So making a record label and creating a record label is good, but I'm, I'm, I'm a person that likes to be independent because I'm not on a record label myself. And um, I don't have a distribution deal that I can put people under. Oh, thank you so much, Adam Smith, for the two pounds. Thank you so much. I appreciate the donation, brother. Thank you so much. Uh, Merry Christmas to you. Um, thank you so much for that. Thank you guys so much. Wow, my... <laughs> My chat is going crazy today. Okay. I think you guys enjoy these videos more, right? Um, thank you. Because I, I was just going to literally start this video and just start cooking something and just be quiet. Uh, but I think this is much better. So, uh, yeah. But anyways, yeah. Um, that's my thing with um, re creating my own record label. Maybe down the line when I'm a bit... When I'm, when I'm uh, maybe more wiser, I can say, uh, maybe down the line, but just not now. I think it's too early for me to do that. Um, sorry for not asking a question that's not about music production. That's okay, man. That's all right. That's all right. What's good, bro? Ski mat, what's good? What's your take on I'm a piano? I'm a piano is, is okay. I have nothing against it or nothing. Um, or I have nothing... I have nothing against any genre, any style. I feel like music is evolving. And as we are now at a point where everyone with a laptop is now a producer, we are getting more people that are more people that are putting their own creativity out there. And the more creativity that's coming out there, the more uniqueness that is coming out there, the more unique styles and um, genres that are going to be popping up. And we're going to see it you know, more often you, you will see that maybe in a year we will have maybe two, three new genres that are going to pop up. 
you know and that is good because that opens more doors for more people because remember there is a lot of music producers right now and all of those music producers are aiming for that one position to be number one in the country number one in the world the, the biggest producer ever you know and we cannot all be that one guy it's like when you're in school right everyone in school is like okay i want to be number one in class i want to be number one you know that's where everybody wants to be if if that was your thing you know but not all of us will make it there has to be somebody that will be at that position but not all of us are going to be there but the music industry is a place where we can all you know coexist because it's a music business it's a business it's not um like a pageant like miss universe where you just have one miss universe and shout out to miss universe as Aussie. but it's something where we can all coexist and we can all be number one in our respective fields. So we have number one in Amapiano, we have number one in uh, Tick, we have number one in Afro, we have number one in uh, in Gom, we have number one in this, we have number one in that. So we can all eat and we can all coexist. So I actually appreciate the, the you know, the 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 styles that are coming up, and it's really unfair for people to you know, to kind of chastise other people when they like these new um, styles that come up because I know there's a lot of people that feel very, um, very different about these new styles. that be like, ah, but this style is not going to last. It's going to be only a while and whatever. And that might be true. It might not even last or whatever. But what does that have to do with anything? You know, if you like your genre, then like your genre and that's it. You know, why judge someone else's genre or someone else's style and make them feel bad about that? I feel that's bullying. And we have a lot of that in this industry where people do genre bullying, where, you know, um, you, you'll be shy or embarrassed to tell people that you produce I'm a piano or you produce um, deep tech or you produce Afro tech or whatever, because, you know, in a certain area or, you, or your friends uh, like a certain an opposite or maybe the opposition of that style. So that's just my thing. Uh, Hexani, what's good? Or Hexani, I don't know how you say that. Um, yeah, you caught me live. Oh, awesome, man. Awesome, awesome, Adam Smith. I appreciate that, man. I appreciate that. I truly appreciate the support from you guys, man. Um, it's It's these types of conversations that I treasure the most because I feel like in the producer community, especially on YouTube, we don't have conversations. We, 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 we don't have times where we can just sit and talk, you know, because for me, that's what I value the most. It's like, it's like a relationship. If you, if you're in a relationship and you don't sit and talk and you just do it all the time. Okay. If you just do it all the time, that, that doesn't strengthen a relationship. Most of the time, if it's just physical, I know I'm going uh, kind of into a, a bad place, but we're all grown ups here. Um, this is for adults, YouTube, this is an adult show. Yeah, it's like if you're in a relationship and it's a physical relationship, usually that just ends up not really going so far because there is no really deeper connection because you can really connect with people when you actually can have a conversation with people. That's why people go on tour. That's why people come on radio stations and, and stuff like that. So I feel like as producers, we need to have more conversations Um I know some of you guys look at my videos and be like, why is he talking? I don't want to see him talking. I want to see him teaching me something. I want to see him producing something in FL Studio. Why is he talking? He talks too much and whatever. But me just showing you something is most of the time not going to help you more than, you know, um, me actually explaining to you why I'm doing it. If that makes any sense. I feel like as producers, we need to have conversations more than we need to, you know, to be showing each other what to do, you know, and uh, stuff like that. So, okay, let me just accept this. How to produce like Argento does. When am I releasing the track I did there? I'm not going to release uh, that track. I don't think I'm going to release that. I think that project was purchased because some of the stuff that I do release here on my channel you know, people hit me up and they um, ask to purchase those um, those projects. And some of the projects that I do make here on the channel become unfinished projects. <laughs> I don't go back to them because 
the moment I go back to it and I, you know, or maybe after I finish watching it after a while, I start to feel like I, I, I can do better. Then I'll create something else and then it actually um, sounds better. Then I feel like I grew, you know, because like, let me tell you a story that happened to me. Story time. <laughs> Why are you laughing? <laughs> Okay. Anyways, I'm I'm just gonna tell you I'm just gonna tell you guys a story about um what happened to me this one time. Um, I was producing for a really long time, like producing uh, myself, like for a whole year without even going outside the studio, right? And what happened was, it was just me. I never spoke to any other producer because we didn't have social media back then. We didn't have you know WhatsApp or Facebook or whatever. So it was only me in my room and my cousin. And while I was producing, I was learning FL Studio and I was making my music and so forth, so forth. To me and the people that was around me, I was, I was the ish. I was like the best and my music was the best and it sounded really good and it sounded amazing. Then I got to a point where I started to hear of other producers and uh, started to go out and visit other producers. There was a point in my my uh production where i actually learned about compression and you know a side chain and all these processes that other producers were doing bro when i came back and listened to my tracks i started to want to trash everything I, I wanted to delete everything and start over so it was like if i learned something new I want to go back to all my projects and add that. So it's like if you learn about sidechain today, you want to go back to all your music and add sidechain to all of your songs. But now imagine how much music you've been making throughout the years. You know what I mean? So now when you learn something new, it just kills everything you've been doing in the past. I don't know if that makes sense. But that's what happened to me at that point. I felt like everything that I was that I had done already was now useless because now I saw all these processes that I wasn't doing and all this advanced techniques of thresholds and ratios and attack times and decay times and advanced, you know, a multi-band compressions and all that, you know, with the big words. And I was like really confused. I was like, so I thought I was actually good, but I wasn't good. You know, it's, it, it was in my head the whole time. And look at these guys. And I came here cocky, tried to play my beast to these guys. But it wasn't even, you know, uh, scratching the surface of production when I started to see their projects. And I remember the guy that actually showed me compression for the first time was using T-Rex. He was using the T-Rex suite. And it has, you know, those yellow, um, the yellow stuff. Uh, I mean, the yellow rack that has a compressor, a gate, and all that type of stuff. And I was like, wow, what is that? And what are you doing? And why does your music sound like how music sounds when it plays on radio? And mine doesn't sound like that. I thought it was my music being unique. Excuse me, but it was actually, you know, a learning curve for me. But it hit me so hard like a, like a train that... You know, it actually sat down and it took the wind out of my lungs. I was like, wow. So I was doing nothing this whole time. I still have a long way to go. And that's just what happens with uh, with production. That's what happens. So most of the time I can produce something today, but on the next day I'm no longer feeling it. And that's why I, you know, I, I always say, you know, um, that's why I want to release more music next year. I want to drop more projects. So expect to see much more projects from me, EPs and albums and so forth. I'm just going to produce, finish, produce, finish, release, produce, finish, release, produce. It's just going to be a cycle. I think I must make a T-shirt. Produce, mix and master release. Produce, mix, release. What is that? Produce, finish, release. I don't know. Something like that. I think I must make merch like that. And then I can actually put it on here on the channel. I think that would be something really interesting. Yeah, and I'm X and I'm out uh, behind me. That would be something that would be really dope. That would be something really dope. So are you also a ghost producer? Yes, I'm a ghost producer. Yes. But there's no need to call me a ghost producer. You can just call me a producer. And I do sometimes sell my projects. Babe, why are you laughing? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. 
um uh okay so prime lab says can i get an opinion on my latest youtube upload any tips on you can give me on an inspiring producer any mindful tips will be great opinion on your latest youtube upload what is your latest 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 youtube upload because i don't think i can see your latest youtube upload okay let me stop my let me stalk my subscribers Prime Lab Studios, your latest. Which one is your latest? On my piano, Prime Lab original mix, misunderstood. So this one. Yo, what up, Jeb Josh? What up, Jeb Josh? You good, bro? <laughs> Babe, Jeb Josh says, come and say hi. Come say hello. <laughs> you are. Hi, guys. Come close to me. <laughs> oh, oh, my God, but... this thing. <laughs> Let me fix it. Let me fix it. Let me fix it. <laughs> oh my god. We're disappearing. <laughs> the, the chroma. Okay, there we go. There we go. Now we're back. <laughs> that was embarrassing, wasn't it? Because <laughs> you're wearing green. Oh. So it's, it's you know, oh, it's the same color as the I'm... green screen. <laughs> it's fine. Look how he disappeared. Look there. That is so cool. Like that, <laughs> that thing was thing. Yeah. Hi guys, how are you? Sorry, I'm interrupting your stuff. You're saying really funny stuff. But yeah, she keeps laughing in the background. <laughs> okay, bye. Okay, bye. I think that was the the, the the best moment of the stream, right? The <laughs> funniest stream moment. <laughs> but this is real life. That's why I like this. This is real life. Unscripted. <laughs> oh my god. This track is actually very nice. Oh yeah, and um, Prime Labs 808 Studios, is this you? Is this your picture? Is this you? Is this you, fam? I like this track. This is a nice track. I like it. It's a really nice track. Well done. Um, I, I just think all you just have to do is just um, <clears throat> pan your stuff. And um, I think variation is there. Um, you have good low end. You have um, really good dynamics in that track. And it really sounds okay. You know, I just think you just have to improve in mixing and all that because I feel like when you're learning music production, you have to look at it in aspects of certain departments, okay? It's like a company. Companies have departments. They have accounting. They have, um, okay, what other departments do I? Marketing. <laughs> Marketing and, you know, d different departments, basically. So it's like there's departments. So you need to always, if you're a one-man band, you need to work with, certain certain departments and concentrate on those um each and every time or you can hire someone to um 
work in that department. It's like if you know you don't care to learn mixing and mastering, hire somebody to do mixing and mastering. E.g. me. I do mixing and mastering for people and they're happy. They release their music. They're good. You know, so if you are if you are a one man band, a, a one man production team, then, you know, you need to work on that. You work on your composition, work on your uh, mixing and mastering, work on your arrangement, uh, work on your marketing, uh, work on your bass lines, work on your drums. So if you isolate those departments and you practice them, um, giving attention and concentrating on that one aspect and moving on to the next when you're good at that certain thing, that's how you grow because with time you will be good and give yourself a year, I promise you, you will be dope. Because if you think that you're just going to uh, watch one tutorial and it's going to teach you from composition to mixing and mastering all the way to releasing a song and it's a hit song and then you're good, that is never going to happen. That is truly never going to happen. How do you remove your background on the live stream? Um, <clears throat> that's called chroma keying. That's called keying. It's called keying out something. So that's... That's what that's called. Uh, I'm using software that does keying. This software, OBS Studio. Well, Streamlabs OBS version. This one's for streaming. This is the one I'm using to um, get rid of my background. But if, if you guys want to see a tutorial on that, then I can definitely, I can definitely make a tutorial on removing backgrounds. <laughs> but you need to have a green screen for that. The green screen that I did show you guys. When I let me show you again. Boom, there. You see the all green that green cloth. It's called a green screen. I can cut out that color using a chroma key like that and that's what they use in movies, like Marvel movies and sci fi movies. It's a it's a simple thing. If you're into um if you're into geeky stuff and stuff like that, you can you know, you can learn it really easy. It's really easy to do. But if you guys want to see stuff like that, you can definitely check that out. And if you, you know, you're also into filmmaking and so forth and whatever, we have um, another channel that I uh, also want to, you know, do tutorials on, on filmmaking and so forth called Teal and Orange Visuals. We always post our music videos there as well. You can go subscribe to that because I know some of you guys are also doing music videos as well. And I know some of you guys are subscribed to that um, this channel. So I think I'm going to do tutorials on things like these on that channel more than here. You know, because I feel like this is more audio and music. And I don't want to put in um, content that might be kind of off-brand-ish to what I've really, you know, um, to what I've really promised to give you guys, you know. So I don't know. It's just something that I think, but you know, I, I I would also want to hear what you guys think. You can also give me advice on it. What what you think would be the best? But you can also just subscribe. It's just subscribing to another channel. It's it's also just something you can do. It doesn't cost any money, as well. <clears throat> oh, thank you for the cocktail. Look at this cocktail, yo. What a cocktail. <laughs> Look at my water cocktail. Happy weekend. There's no alcohol in this. If you thought there was alcohol. <clears throat> uh, can I get feedback on my latest track? Feedback on what? What exactly do you need feedback on? And is it on your YouTube channel? If I go on YouTube right now, will I find it? Let me see. If I don't see it, then eh, that's that. Because today we're not doing feedback, but I'm a nice guy. Yep, there we go. Nothing here on the channel, so... There we go, nothing. Yeah, you can use uh, Streamlabs just for recording. Yeah, true. Because I, I also use it to record. Because I was using the normal OBS at first. And then I switched to uh, Streamlabs 
um, because it has, you know, better streaming uh, capabilities and features and stuff like that. So that's when I switched to um, uh, OBS Streamlabs. So, yeah, you can use it just to record only without doing anything else. Oh, happy grinding, um, Tepo. Yeah, make that money, bro. Get to work, bro. Get to work. You know, this video will be online when you come back from work. So, you know, don't worry about that. Yeah, recording online. Yes, you can still record online. There's a record button here uh, down below. I don't know if you can see that. Okay, there. If you press this record, you can just record to your disk. And if you, you know, there's a stream button and there's a record button. So you can just definitely just record without streaming. So um, you can do that. Um, okay, Tonic Music says, is it okay to record vocals with a noise gate on? Do you mean record the vocals with the noise gate as you're recording the vocals or adding a noise gate after you record the vocals? Because I think, because the way that I record is I record vocals without a noise gate. If you're getting too much noise, then you need to um, lower your input. Your input will be too much. You, you see like how I'm recording right now. I'm, 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 I'm really close to the mic because I don't want to lift um, the input of this mic because it will pick out the whole room and the echo and it's just going to sound disastrous. Matter of fact, let me show you guys my chain. Of how my voice is sounding like right now. You see it's an FL Studio. Um, there it is. So I'm running Arvox. So you see Arvox has a gate right here. There's a gate. If I turn the gate down. Listen to what happens. Now you can hear everything. And if I bring it up. All that noise is gone. But you can just hear me. So that's basically a gate. And then I'm compressing. I know I'm compressing kind of a lot. That's because I'm, I want to... Sometimes my voice... You know, sometimes I move away. Sometimes I'm loud. And then I have a CLA-2A. Just for control. Just for control. I love this compressor. My favorite compressor. Just to add a little bit of sweetening. Just add a little bit of sweetener in there. And I have a de -esser for those S's. For those S's, not to really be too sharp. And then I have an EQ. Okay, this EQ is embarrassing me. Oh, there it is. I'm cutting out some of the high end and some of the mid range because I know that all this compression in my voice has really uh, boomy in the mid range section. And I'm cutting out a lot of bass. But yeah, I must bring that bass back. I must bring the bass back. There we go. I think that's fine. And if I switch all of this off, this is how my voice sounds like without any processing on it. Um, if it's just going clean from the microphone into um, the computer and as you hear it, if I put it on, I sound much better, better quality and clean. I'm, I'm also comfortable to hear myself back um sounding like this and you can see that i'm not clipping over here i'm below 6 db when i'm speaking comfortably in my normal speaking voice i'm not really overly loud and when i feel like i'm gonna uh, be loud i just move away from the microphone but then if i do that you start to pick up the room so that's why i'm trying to stay close to the microphone so i have that sweet nice radio voice you know, that quest uh, voice. But anyways, I think um, I am going to end the stream there. It's been an hour. I think I need to uh, end the stream. But if you guys uh, have questions that you have still, um, drop them right now in the next few minutes before I leave um, so that I can answer them quickly. I know some of you guys might be joining in right now. So if you have any questions that you wanted to ask, ask away before I leave. Um, and then I'll... I'll answer them as quick as I can. 
then we can go about our Friday. Yeah, if you if, if you stream it, you can put on a noise gate. And um, OBS also has. Uh, you can actually add VSTs to OBS. You can add your whole VST chain to your um, to your input of to your voice input or something like that. To your um, yeah, to your voice and to your um, to your chain. Basically, you can add a noise remover as well and so forth. Yeah, yeah, that's um, you. You're getting that noise when you record vocals because your input is too much. You see the mic input. Like, let me show you my uh, my sound settings quickly. Um, let me show you my sound settings. Okay, there. This is my microphone, and if I turn it down, there you go. You see, my microphone was around here, somewhere here by seventy. You see. That's where it's at a comfortable place. So I can put it all the way up, but then you you start to hear the room. So you want it somewhere like maybe 60% or 70%, but I feel like 70% is a comfortable place where you can uh, put your mic on. So if you have an interface, make sure that your, your input switch is on 12 o'clock or on 1 o'clock, if you understand what I mean. If you look at a clock, Put it by one o'clock or two o'clock, somewhere there. You don't have to crank it all the way up and make it too loud. That's how you get clipping. That's how it starts to pick up all you know that bad noise. So um, just make sure that your input is not too high, you know, and it's not too low because if I put my input like this, I will have to shout to be at a good really. Uh, it's too low. I have to bring it up. I have to bring it uh, all the way up. So I think seventy is a good place for my microphone to be at. I don't usually pass 70 unless maybe I, I, I'm, I'm in a distance then I can maybe put it on 80 but then when stuff is happening in the background and windows are open and I just don't want to bother you guys with a lot of background noises I usually just cut it down to um, to 60 or 50 if I have to and then I just add um, some processing and some effects um, like the gate just to get that um, just to get that gain back so that's why I have processing on my voice right now so this is my chain for uh, my voice when I'm doing these types of videos even when I'm recording tutorials this is my chain this is the chain that I use so I just do it in FL studio and then um, just like that <laughs> um, okay what else Seasons greetings. Thank you. Thank you so much, Haba. Uh, Neptune, appreciate it, man. Um, I, f I feel we need to share, man. Sharing is caring, bro. Sharing is caring. And like, you're all my bros, man. You're all my bros. I do not know you personally, but you're all my bros, man. P put value. Value will come back, you know. It doesn't cost money for me to help you guys because, I mean, I'm just a helpful guy. If someone stops you in the street and be like, Sir, can you give me a direction to get to this so-and-so in such-and-such a place? Are you going to think about, okay, should I help them or not? Should I give them this knowledge or not? Hmm. That's basically what you guys are asking for. I'm basically giving you guys directions to go somewhere. I can do it. <laughs> Stop side-eyeing me. But but I hope you guys are getting what I'm trying to say. I'm ba I basically feel like I'm giving strangers directions when I meet them in the street, and you know you you stopping me in the street and asking me for directions like X. How can I get to such and such a store or such and such a place? And I'm be like, okay, uh, do this, do this, or go this direction and turn here, turn there, turn there, and head straight, and then you will get to where you want to go. You know, it it feels good for me to do that. You know, and. I feel that's 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 being human to to coexist and help each other. So you know that's it. Uh, Adam Smith, you were looking forward to a cook up. I am so sorry I didn't cook up today, but I hope you have um, watched all my other cook up videos because I've I have millions of other cook up videos, and this has just been a long talking video. But I'm gonna definitely do a cook up as well um, that you can definitely uh, check out, man. Thank you. Thank you so much for um, 
the super chat as well. But yeah, man, um, I'll do a cooker, but I feel like sometimes just having a chat with you guys makes, you know, makes everything make sense. I know there's people popping in and out just be like, okay, what's happening? He's like, is he cooking up? No, he's not. Okay, not worth my dinner. Then they come out. <laughs> but yeah. But anyways, thank you guys so much, man. I, I'm I'm going to have videos dropping soon. I'm going to have tutorials that I'm going to be dropping uh, and videos that are going to be coming soon. And you guys just stay locked, man. You guys enjoy the rest of your Friday. Be safe out there. You've watched all my videos. Wow. Wow, man. Thank you so much. Oh, wow, Neptune. Thank you so much for the 35 Rand, bro. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. You know what? I'll I'll do a cook up. Just because Neptune sent a 35 Rand, I'm going to start cooking something. I think. Come. No, you're not. I'll switch it off. Go ahead. I want to say thank you guys for all the super chats. They really help us a lot. Yeah. <laughs> and then I'm, I'm having in super Yeah, this Neptune sent it. Thank you, Neptune. You almost like Neptune. Yeah, it's like planet, Neptune. Like I thought planet. it was Neptune. <laughs> is it still a planet? Is it which one was not a planet? Neptune anymore? is a planet, yeah. There's the one that's not it's Pluto that's not a planet anymore. Oh yeah. Thank you, Neptune. And everybody else that has super chatted us. Uh, it means a lot, and yeah. Okay, bye. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. Because of Neptune, I'm gonna do a cook up. Yes, cook something up. I'm gonna cook something up. As you're cooking. It's a loud ass plane. Okay, let's see what we can make today. Today. Let me drop my gain. I feel like I'm loud as a hell. Okay, let's see what we're going to cook. Um, I'm in love with Spire, fam. Like, I am so in love with Spire, man. Let me do something really nice and weekendy and fast. Yeah, there's cars passing everywhere. <laughs> Neptune says you're welcome, baby. I don't like using the metronome nowadays. I like to use um I like to use a kick. So let me go into my deep house. Summer pack and look for a nice kick. Okay, I'll just pick that one. Boom. Oh, no, 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 no. Okay, you know what? I'm going to let Neptune pick the uh, the style. Neptune, what, what style do you want me to cook up? Let me know what style of house you want me to cook up before I even go anywhere. Yeah, Adam. Um, Neptune. Um, Neptune, I'm waiting for your... Um, for your input so come in quick um yeah adam uh, spire is amazing bro it has really amazing sounds i really like it hold on oh i'm on leads let me go for something else Afrotech, okay. Afrotech it is. Okay, let me change my timing to main. Let me copy these two, drop them there. Send that to a track. 
Stone at another instance. But Spire is heavy though. I'm gonna send this to a reverb. I'm gonna change this delay bank to delay three and maybe make it fast. Sounds much better. steps and then I'm going to move these steps uh, control shift and I'm going to have this little short hat and go bra machine gun and just raise my swing then we go into the arrangement section <clears throat> okay let me just take out this baseline out of this okay so And I'm going to remove the delay. That delay sounds terrible. And the reverb. Is there reverb there? What is that? Now let me add some purity. for string matter of fact let me not add a purity let me add an expand and here an expand I'm gonna add a note here but I want this to be high string Make it long like four bars and take it out. Boom. Let me drop the attack, drop the decay and the release a little bit. Maybe drop the note, I think that's too high. Okay, now let me drop another spire. Let me see in factory two. Let me see what I can add. Okay, not a lead, but maybe in factory one, maybe a pluck. That's too long, just bring that back. Hold 
Hold on. I have an idea here. Okay, hold on, expand. Okay, the sound is terrible. Where's my usual sound? Some of these sounds so sound weird. Okay. You see, that's a chord. Some of these sounds are chords, not like single notes. So that confuses you. this and then I'll edit this later. Oh, I know it sounds terrible. Something like that. I was making it too quick. Quantize that. Nope. Quantize everything. Okay, that's out of key, obviously. But now I fix the key of the bass. Maybe I can fix the key of the plug sound to match my mouse is dying. You know what? Let me use ghost notes. that works drop that there that's how you develop a melody guys it's trial and error okay let me mute everything else Like these are too high. There we go, they're too high. There we go, now we're getting somewhere. The sound is bad. in somewhere.
drone note. I'm still not happy with this melody, man. I feel like I'm not running into good sounds. Delete. I need to record that. Montage that. Check that out. Drop that in there. Oh, I recorded audio. Okay, I don't, I don't want to record audio. Delete that. Audio, nope. Load up a GMS. GMS is dope though. GMS is amazing. Okay, I'm gonna use this one. And cut this half step. Change my drone to something more textured. But the nice thing about expand is that you can add other sounds. Sounds terrible. Um, maybe uh, strings, but pads are always good. Well, that's the thing. You need to know when you're making music when something is okay and when it's not. Like I will, like 
I will take a sound out if I don't feel like it works. Let's look for something, something that's gonna be runny in a spot in um, spire sequence. This is how it dies. We drop it. Okay, I feel like using something I haven't used in a while, like poison. Okay, let's see what you got for me, poison. Look for a baseline and spire again. We'll just check in the factory. One kind of that Kususa motorbike base. Step at the end, but I'm gonna fix that. Go and drop that. Okay, I'll just duplicate this. You know, matter of fact, I'm gonna make it a hole till the end.
Yo, what's up, a social? Maybe let me try another bass line if I'm gonna let this one hold. It doesn't really. Look at my face, disgusting, bro. That's that disrespectful. Like river braided snares. That's how you know the track is banging when you make that disgusted face. something from nexus right quick what do you guys think about nexus 3 though i don't have nexus 3 yet okay let me see if i can add a gated pad get a pass See if I can add it here. Oop, that's too long, fam. some vocal vocal sounds that I have in here I think it's in one of these JE sample packs it's a vocal pack. is this the Y4 vocal hey. hello I like Yeah. 
Rumsa, Rumshot. Just gonna extend this and automate my cut off browse parameters, create automation clip so that my automation moves right there. I like it when my automation moves right there. Time to send all of these to um, mixer tracks. Boom. Cause this ain't near loud enough. Okay, so I'm about to side chain um, to set up a side chain. So pay attention as I set up a side chain in case you don't know how to side chain. All right. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come here to insert twenty, and I'm gonna rename the side chain. Right. So that's my side chain track. I'm gonna add a color so it's different. So that's that blue. Okay, so it's got a color. So that's my side chain track. That's why I'm going to set up my side chain. First, I'm going to insert a uh, fruity limiter. There. Let's keep that there, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to send my the image of my kick. Let me rename this kick to the side chain. So how you do that is that you come here to the side chain and then you right click and say side chain to this track. And then it's just going to send the image of the kick to this channel. It's not going to send the signal of the kick to the channel. So this is a quick sidechain tutorial, right? So after I send that there, it's just going to send its image to um, that side. Then now, the sound that I want to sidechain is this sound over here. So I am going to come here to the sidechain and I'm going to right click and say route to this track only. So I'm going to send that track to go into my sidechain first and then go out to my master, then boom, there we go. But nothing is happening, right? Cool, sidechain is not happening yet. So now when you come here to your um, uh, fruity limiter, 
you come here to comp which is compressor then you click on there and you see where it says sidechain right click on there click on kick and then you now indicate uh, what's the image of the sidechain then you lower your threshold but you want to do this while you're playing and while you can see your sidechain work because your kick is gonna uh, is gonna be purple attacking um, the wave of the other sound so I'm gonna show you right now as I lower the threshold you see so nothing is happening yet but that's the kick the one with the blue spikes so then I increase my ratio then my sidechain starts to happen so now I'm sidechaining but that's too much though I need to pull back my release because I don't want to make my sound wavy so I'm gonna put my sidechain to uh, my release to around 11 o'clock I don't think I have a uh, favorite. I'm a piano artist, but I'm a huge fan of um, um, what's the name of that girl? Shasha. Yes, I'm a, I'm a huge fan of Shasha and um, um, uh, something Soweto. That song. What's that song again? Ooh, Agla Lake. Oh, that track is a vibe. Some being, oh, that bass line though. Ba -ba -boom. Yo. Anyways. Now it's stuck in my head. So that's our side chain. So if, in case I want to add another thing to the same side chain, all I just have to do is pick this expand here, route to that track only again. So now it's being affected by the same side chain. Take that same track, route it, send it to um, that track, and everything that's going into this track is being side chained by that kick. So my kick stays prominent. So I actually wanted to add some low end to this track. I'm going to add DX10, and I'm going to add the preset E flute. <clears throat> Excuse me, in the E flute, I am going to use the. I'm going to use the. Um... No, keep it for me. <laughs> I'm going to use the. The low notes to give a little bit of bass. I'm just gonna copy this JMS on number seven and copy that. That's what I want to give that low end. But that's too short though, so I'm gonna make that longer. But you can see it's too high. I'm gonna transpose that down. Make sure that it's bass notes, like sub note. Drop that down. Oof. Okay, my stuff is clashing with something else. Oh, my first spire has really low, has really low subs into it. Okay, let me EQ those out. Let me EQ those out. Matter of fact, you know what? Let me just copy the same one and make sure that my baseline is that one. Too high, drop that down. How high is that? Oh, okay.
these low notes are really tricky to hear. That's why I have to press my headphones in. Okay, I'll make these notes longer. You know what I'm going to do to this E flute? I am going to crush it. I'm going to crush it with some flattener. And again, if I'm going to add sidechain to this E flute, what do I do? I just route it to that uh, sidechain track only. And then it's going to get affected by the sidechain as well. But eh, I don't feel like sidechaining it. I want it to play on its own. Because I don't feel like it's messing up my kick. Oh, now it's not routed right anywhere. Okay. And then for mastering, I can throw in a preset. I think I'll throw in this Deep House Master Chain preset. I think I have a lot. I think I have a lot of stuff in there. Oh my God. It's now making my voice sound mastered. Okay. That is too much. I am so sorry, guys. I am so sorry. That is too much mastering. Let me drop that. Drop that. Okay, let me drop this. They have it. I think this track is done. Sounds nice, but I want to know what you guys think. I want to know what you guys think about this. Snap, we're going for like two hours. Okay, guys, I think that's it for this live stream. Time to get back to my normal human being life. I'm done being um, a producer for today. Ear fatigue is real, guys. I think I need to make a video on ear fatigue ear fatigue is real but anyways <laughs> yeah thank you guys so much for chilling with me today it's a friday i hope you guys enjoyed the rest of your weekend i am gonna have videos that are gonna be dropping soon so um look out for that but i sure dropped a lot of gems in this live stream the first half was just a conversation and then the second half was a cook up shout out to everybody that uh, threw in their super chats i appreciate all of you guys and i love everybody subscribe to my channel and thank you guys so much for watching and the only way you will see and see when i drop a video is if you subscribe and click on the bell icon and i'm gonna check you guys later i am x and i'm out peace <laughs>